<laughs> Hello and welcome to a special episode of The Coding Train where I'm going to show you the recording studio where I make all the tutorial videos and live streams. So I'm at the Canbar Institute of Film and TV at NYU Tisch School of the Arts. Um, this is behind this door is a small closet where I've recorded many video tutorials. Other people have made uh, tutorials and things from this room. And actually we're going to be moving to a new studio. Uh, later this summer, so I want to make sure to document this in case you want to make your own video tutorials. Hopefully there'll be some nice tidbits and information for you. All right, I'm going to open this door and we're going to go inside. Come on. And I have now entered the studio space. I am walking over to the desk where I record everything and I'm seeing you because I'm recording from here. There's a camera here recording. Those are the only two things that are recording right now. So <laughs> I'm actually also currently streaming this to YouTube. It's not publicly live streamed right now. There's a, a members and patrons are watching. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of talk through all of the different pieces of what I use while I'm live streaming and potentially, um, and, so, and, and then we'll show you from different perspectives so you can see how everything works. So the first thing that I wanna show you is this computer over here. So this is actually the streaming computer. It's not the streaming computer, it's the monitor attached to the streaming computer. And it's running Open Broadcast Studio, which is what I'm using to send the audio and video data. And it has also got a little window of a YouTube chat going here that I can see. And so what the most important thing to do if you want to stream to YouTube, which you can use Open Broadcast Studio to stream to a number of other things, is to connect YouTube with Open Broadcast Studio. And the way you do that is through the live streaming dashboard. So this is the dashboard. It shows a little preview of what I'm streaming. It shows how many people are viewing at a given time, the average walk time, play times, the chat rate. I have already connected Open Broadcast Studio and YouTube because I'm broadcasting this and recording it to disk, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. So under the stream settings, there's a particular property called ingestion, and you can see here there's a, 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 a stream URL, a backup server URL. These are all already put into the streaming software, Open Broadcast Studio, but there is also this stream name key. So if I were to copy this and then change into Open Broadcast Studio, under settings, under stream, this is where I want to paste that key. Now this is grayed out right now <laughs> because I'm already streaming, but that's how YouTube, my event on YouTube, my live streaming event on YouTube is connected to Open Broadcast Studio itself. So there's a lot of other settings here under output. I can change the uh, recording, the uh, audio settings, all sorts of things. Um, but you can see right here under these buttons, I am streaming and I am recording. So now that we see how Open Broadcast Studio and YouTube are connected, let's look at how is Open Broadcast Studio getting the camera image, my laptop image, combining it, all that sort of stuff. So everything starts with this computer over here on the floor. It probably would be better to put this on a shelf or something, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, so this is a Canon Mark III 5D. Um, it's plugged into power, so it's not running off of battery. It has HDMI out. That HDMI out is going through a black magic box, which basically takes HDMI in, Thunderbolt out, and converts it to a capture device. So it then goes into this computer, and it's being captured. The laptop is uh, through USB-C, um, is also connected to HDMI, which also goes into a black magic box and into the computer. In Open Broadcast Studio, I can then create a scene. And so I could, I could make, let's make a new one. I'm gonna make a new scene called Test. It's a great name. All right, now I've added the mic, you can actually hear me, but the screen is black. So now I added the mic input, so this scene now has audio. Then what I'm going to add is, let's add another source. And because those are go through those black magic boxes, I can add a black magic device. I can add an existing one like green cannon. And there it is. It's actually already got the, um, uh, the chroma keying filter, but let me just turn that off. I'm gonna hide that. So now you can see this is the actual camera view. You can see the secondary laptop that I have with green uh, paper on it. I'm gonna just shrink this. So you can see there's lots of, I could rotate it, I could flip it, I could color, I could do all sorts of stuff to it. There's lots of features of Open Broadcast Studio, but let me add another uh, source. I'm gonna go Black Magic Device, and I'm going to add um, laptop. Now you can see the laptop is the feed from here, but it's covering it. <laughs> so what I wanna do is move Green Cannon above it, 
So now you can see the green cannon is above it, but I will, uh, but let me put the chroma keying back in. So I'm gonna click on that, filters, add chroma key. We could just see, by the way, there's lots of other filters here that you could try. Um, I'm gonna hit close, I'm gonna put this down, and there we go, and I put myself over to the side. So this is basically the, the configuration I use for the coding train when I'm live broadcasting. So I'm here, I can turn here, I can sort of see. So if I pull up some code, if I pull up some, like a, uh, the P5 web editor, I can see it over here as I stand this way. So it's like I'm telling you what the weather is in uh, the P5 web editor. Um, so I look over here at the camera, I type over here on the computer, and if I want to sort of see a monitor of the composite, then I see that over here. So also while I'm live streaming, I like to keep the corner of my eye on the live chat. So usually what I'll do is I'll uh, take the chat um, as a little pop-out window and put it next to Open Broadcast Studio and increase the size of the font. And we can see now all of the various uh, members like Solar Liner and Xavier and Motion TX who are watching and telling me that there was no sound earlier, which is always really helpful. I also have a secondary Slack channel um, with uh, going on this uh, extra laptop where I also keep the dashboard so I can see who's watching and how many people, which right now is nine concurrent viewers. So maybe you've also noticed that I sometimes play music or different sound effects, and those are coming here from this iPad. So this iPad is running a piece of software called SoundQ. The audio is playing out of this laptop, coming out of the headphone jack into this little Onyx Blackjack USB recording in interface. <laughs> so it actually then comes out of here, USB into this laptop, because that way the laptop's audio is going out into the recording system, so that can be included as part of the um, live broadcast, because when I play audio here, you can see under laptop, you can see the green under microphone going up, and you can see the green under laptop going up. Both of these are two separate audio sources. So I can capture audio from this laptop itself if there was like sound in an example I'm programming, but I can also get the audio from this iPad into this laptop into there. And I'm actually, to do that, I'm using a piece of software called Loopback. Loopback is taking the audio from the, Bla the Onyx Blackjack uh, interface and then actually monitoring it out through the uh, multi-output device, which is actually the display port, the HDMI output, and then it's coming into Open Broadcast Studio that way. So this mic here is going directly into Open Broadcast Studio via a separate USB input to the streaming computer, but then the audio from this iPad is coming out separately through this computer. This computer. So many computers. This lav mic this is the wireless receiver. So all the audio from this mic here is coming into here. Then this is another USB interface into the streaming computer. So that's where my audio is coming from. So over here in this other part of the closet, <laughs> uh, I have a second camera, also HDMI out into a Blackmagic box. And this camera is pointed at this whiteboard. So this is actually not a whiteboard, it's just whiteboard paint on the wall. It's, so it's actually not the, it's not, not the greatest because it, it, it's hard to clean, but it is nice that it covers so much space. So what I do during a live stream, if I want to draw some sort of diagram, you know, with a rainbow, and like a, this was gonna be a cat. Um, then what I do is I have a separate scene that's in Open Broadcast Studio called uh, wall Whiteboard. So I could just click on this, and there you go, you see the whiteboard? I'm gonna go back to this one, but um, that's inconvenient. I used to have this button that was hooked up to change, to, tell, to give up Open Broadcast Studio, to switch between the different scenes, but uh, it so happens that you could just use a keyboard to do this. So I have the, uh, in Open Broadcast Studio, under settings, under hotkeys, you can uh, set certain keys to switch to a certain scene. So if I say two, then now I've switched to the whiteboard, I can walk over here, you can see me, I can draw here on the whiteboard, and then I can walk back, and if I hit one, I'm now back over here talking to you about this. So two goes to the whiteboard, one, and then I have other keys, like the key Z will like quickly turn off the computer, so if ever like I'm about to like type in a password or some, 
secret API key that I don't want people to see, I can turn that off. Or if I'm playing, I forgot to do this actually this morning, but if I'm playing a video or something and I don't want to stand in the shot, I can disappear or reappear however I want. There's so much more in Open Broadcast Studio. You know, I could have a fade between the scenes and all that kind of stuff. I could have a preview of what's coming next, but I'm using it in the most simple way. I also always keep my copy of a million random digits nearby in case I want to relax and read some random numbers. I usually have a train whistle, but I didn't bring it with me today. It's very sad. But I do have a bell, which I like to ring. Thank you for watching this behind the scenes video about the Coding Train Recording Studio here at NYU at Tisch School of the Arts. As I mentioned earlier, this studio is being shut down at the end of this month. Uh, we're moving to a new building in Brooklyn. I'm hoping to set up some recording equipment and a new space there. And also I have some other designs on some other places that I might make videos. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you have questions about the setup, things that I didn't cover, please ask them in the comments. If you end up, if you have your own live streaming setup that you use or have tips for people, uh, uh, please add those as well. And thank you so much. Goodbye. I'm still here.